Over the past week, we've looked at some of the exciting things happening in the crypto space over the next month, including Apex, the XRPL Developer Summit, happening in the start of September. I wanted to take this episode and devote something a little special here. We talk about utility and real-world applications for crypto and Web3 assets, and I want to take a deeper dive here into some of the existing Web3 brands that are trying to serve customers in the real world and maybe get some conversation going among us about some of the future utility. Now we've seen Ripple announce numerous partnerships from uh, Fluff World to Ducati to Lotus. So what is this going to end up doing in the real world? What will that utility look like? And how could they do similar things to what's already happening with some of the other players in this space? So let's dive into all those topics. But if we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. Now, here's just a quick reminder on some of the things we've already talked about over the course of this week. If you look here, there's the video where we talked about the key, uh, keynote speakers at Apex. And then over the course of the week, we had a few other topics related to this. So do check out some of those videos earlier in the week. I'll just link the video page in the video description, or you can find it directly through uh, clicking on my picture below this video. Now, this was in the Wall Street Journal, and I think it's really important for us to see what other players in the space are doing because the XRP ledger, as we know, is efficient, it's green, and it's low cost. The ability to service a large number of transactions is also vital for future growth and enhancement. But there are other brands out there that are trying to serve customers in the real world. Let's talk about what they're doing and then maybe how within the XRP community we can do some of these things as well. Knowing though that there are numerous XRPL projects already out there that we've talked about quite a bit on the channel. If you've missed previous episodes of our Sunday Frank Cho Crypto Show, we've gone into several of them in detail. So do keep in mind there are numerous projects out there doing similar things. But let's look at what else is happening with comparable companies and projects out in the market. So companies are bringing NFTs to life in physical spaces, opening stores and pop-up experiences to draw in existing and new customers. Marketers, artists, and others have dived into offering NFTs, digital tokens of authenticity that exist on the blockchain, but the concept remains abstract to many consumers. The brick-and-mortar efforts are partly a strategy by companies involved with NFTs and other elements of Web3 to educate consumers about what they're selling, enlisting strengths of the physical world, such as the chance for real-world human interaction, retail experts said. Web3 refers to the idea of a decentralized internet that uses crypto, blockchain, and other technologies. At some point, it becomes really expensive to win customers online only, or if you don't have the same ability to unlock fandom in a way that you do in physical spaces, said Melissa Gonzalez, principal at architecture and design, and design firm MG2 Corp. There's such a demystification that's needed around what Web3 is, she said, who is also founder of Lionesque Group, a studio at MG2 that creates experiential retail for D2C brands. Doodles, a Web3 media and entertainment company that includes a collection of 10,000 NFTs, has created several pop-up shops over the past year. The company's pop-up at South by Southwest was open to the public, although it gave owners of Doodles NFTs custom badges to use throughout the site and access to limited edition merchandise. NFT holders could scan their badges at specific installations for unique experiences and see their NFT pro or NFTs projected on a wall bouncing around with other Doodles. We saw South by Southwest as a great place to showcase our brand and differentiate ourselves from what everybody else was up to, said Evan Keast, co-founder of Doodles. About 6,000 people came to the pop-up and more than 2,500 people bought merchandise there, the company said. At NFT NYC, a four-day event that took place in June, 
Doodles had a, hold, or held another public pop-up. This one gave its NFT holders a chance to buy additional digital goods associated with an upcoming NFT collection. Doodles plans to eventually expand its scope to include concerts, according to Mr. Keast. Every time we show up is very important to us, he said, and we do want to stand out amongst the noise, not only in the Web3 space, but in traditional entertainment or advertising. And this is exciting to see when projects have the interconnectedness between what's happening in Web3 in the digital space and a translation to the physical space. We've seen this become more and more vital as time goes on. There's certain XRPL projects that are looking to do similar things and might be worth considering. One interesting thing that we talked about earlier this week is Sologenic is having a meetup at the same time as the XRPL developer conference in Vegas as well. So there's that face-to-face -face and you get more of that interaction. So a lot of these things will be able to come to fruition as time goes on, as projects build, and certainly as we have an opening up more of travel and everything as we're at the end end of a period where that's been suppressed. Now, just as a quick reminder before we get back into it, the Nano S Plus from Ledger is DeFi and NFT friendly, so you can secure your digital assets and self-custody them, your NFTs, just like what you would do with your cryptocurrencies. I'll link it down below in the video description. Multiple colors available and in stock now. Continuing through here though, other NFT projects have rolled out similar exclusive perks for NFT holders at their shops. Entertainment company Super Plastic opened a retail store in New York in July as a way to bring its digital characters into the physical world, said Paul Budnitz, founder and CEO of the company. The store is open to the public, but Super Plastic next month plans to open an area for exclusive products and events that will be restricted to owners of its NFTs. Decentralized crypto art platform Super Rare opened a temporary gallery space in New York this summer to raise awareness of its brand. The gallery has held exclusive events for people who are NFT collectors, as well as programming about digital and interactive art for people who are not familiar with the company. It's not just things that you put on your wall, but these are also interactive pieces that you can use, immerse yourself with, said John Crane, chief executive and co-founder of the company. Some 5,000 visitors have come to the gallery since its opening date, the company said. And something worth pointing out, if you remember from earlier in the year, Ripple signed their creators to the Creator Fund. They've opened up a new round and they've had partnerships established with other NFT marketplaces, NFT Pro, Eternal Labs, on XRP. And so they are looking to dive closer and deeper here into this community, to these projects, and expanding NFT options on the XRP ledger. So much more to come there. But do you see something like this being a possibility down the road for Ripple Partners? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Educating the public is a key goal for many of these Web3 stores, including retail startup Soul Stores, Inc. Its Solana Spaces shop in New York it encourages uh, shoppers to interact with various displays to learn about blockchain and Web3, for example. People can also buy limited edition merchandise and view an NFT gallery. Soul Store CEO was previously a head of B8TA, a retail store that encouraged people to test new tech items such as robots and drones before it dissolved back in February. Visitors to the Solana Spaces store can earn rewards or activities such as setting up a crypto wallet. The rewards include payments in the cryptocurrency USDC and NFT badges. Paying customers to try par, uh, products is a tactic that he wanted to try with B8TA stores but didn't because it felt sleazy. But it doesn't feel as odd at Solana Spaces because the store is partly about crypto, he said. More than 87% of the people who have visited have completed all the tasks at the installations according to the company. About 5,000 people visited the store in its first two weeks. The store is the product itself, which is an experience that rewards you for participating and encouraging, he added. 
Web3 communities have largely existed in online spaces only, so stores and pop-ups can help bring human connection back to it. Online Web3 communities can get a little bit transactional, said Miss Gonzalez from earlier. And so when you bring that into an in-store environment, it's actually the opportunity to make it more human again, which makes it more sticky. So as we think about XRPL community projects, do you think that there's a great oppor uh, uh, opportunity to bring together the community, not just digitally, but also physically? Would you be interested in projects that have more of these meetups and pop-ups where you take things that you've invested in in the digital space, whether that be NFTs or something else Web3 based, and then in the real life have some sort of interaction and connection there based either on your holdings or on a specific asset or subset of assets you hold? Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm really curious what everyone in the community thinks about this. Is this the opposite of what was envisioned at first of having this digital metaverse where things are interacted in fully digitally, or is this the meshing of the virtual and the physical together to create a more robust system. I'm eager to know what you think, so do let me know down in the comments below. I hope you found the information here to be helpful. If you did, drop a like on the video. It helps the channel a ton and keeps you informed. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so I can keep you up to date on the latest news and make sure you check out the link in the video description if you're interested in securing your NFTs and other crypto assets through self-custody with Ledger. And as always, this article will be linked down below if you want to do some more research on your own. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and weekend, and I will see you in the next one.